Hi, Tom here. Before I begin this special theme week on my channel, I just wanted to put forth a little disclaimer, if I may. Over the course of this week's videos, I will periodically be poking fun at various aspects of Canada and the Canadian people, figures of speech, cultural traits, etc. But please be aware that it is never mean-spirited, and it's always out of affection, as I will explain coming up in a few minutes here. So I hope that my Canadian viewers out there will take such jokes as the good-natured ribbing they're intended to be. So let's crank this mother out, eh? Greetings one and all, and welcome finally to my second annual theme week here on Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, yes, annual at least in terms of occurring in consecutive calendar years, but if you're looking for annual to mean the same time every year, well, <laughs> you're just asking for too darn much. But anyway, uh, yes, it uh, if you were here watching my channel back in uh, the spring of last year, uh, or if you've uh, since searched uh, through my past videos, you will note that my last theme week was Weird Al Week. Yes, a week-long celebration leading up to my VIP attendance at Weird Al Yankovic's ridiculously self-indulgent, ill-advised vanity tour, which a year and a half later, part of me still feels like I'm coming, coming down off the high from. Uh, but yes, I've made a list of the Weird Al Week videos uh, in the list section of my YouTube channel's homepage, so if you haven't watched them yet, uh, please do check out that list and uh, indulge yourself, and indulge me by watching them. But anyway, yes, it didn't take long after Weird Al Week was over before I realized uh, and decided what I wanted my next theme week to be. It was pretty much a no-brainer in some ways. Uh, it just took me forever, too, obviously, to uh, actually get it... Uh, rigidly planned out, filmed and edited, and brought to you. Uh, yes, the last month of the year, I guess, is better than not at all this year. Uh, but as, as, yes, as I mentioned before, and will probably mention once more before the year is out, this past year, outside of my YouTube channel, was just a mess. Uh, it, in some ways, it's a miracle that I've gotten this theme week done at all this year. But anyway, yes, I decided quickly after Weird Al Week was over that I wanted my next theme to be Canada Week. And so it is. Uh, I have decided to make a week-long love letter, if you will, to my favorite music from Our Neighbor to the North, Canada. Uh, yes, I've mentioned before how I have a soft spot for the Canadian people in several different ways, and I've been thinking about, in preparation for this uh, week's videos, I've been thinking about where it all started. And, uh, well, part of it is kind of like the, the crux or the uh, nexus of it all, if you will, is one of my favorite albums of all time, and yes, I will be, of course, part of this week's videos is I will be talking about my favorite Canadian artists and my favorite Canadian albums of all time. Those will be coming up later on this week. And also, uh, I will be bringing in two special guests, uh, good YouTube friends of mine who happen to be actually Canadian YouTubers, uh, and I just invited them in to uh, talk about their favorite Canadian artists and albums themselves to get uh, something of an insider's perspective on Canadian music. So. Uh, that one, I've really appreciated them uh, coming in and uh, helping out with uh, this theme week for me. And uh, But yeah, in this video, I thought I'd just give kind of an introduction to uh, why I love Canadians uh, like I do. Uh, so basically, what where I think where it all started, as far as I can figure, is back when I was much younger, um, I think I was still a teenager when this, was, uh, when this happened, there was a cable channel here in the States that uh, started airing a... A uh, bunch of half-hour adventure shows that happened to have been produced in Canada, and uh, one of them was uh, it's the American release. The American title was uh, Rin Tin Tin Canine Cop. It was marketed or uh, at least aired in Canada as Cats and Dog, because the main character's name was uh, Hank Katz. Clever title, uh, and yeah, that was a fun little adventure show. This was probably my favorite uh, favorite of the bunch, and then there was also a western called Border Town. And I, I am not a fan of Westerns, I will tell you right now, but there was just something about it. Uh, it takes place in a town that straddles the U.S.-Canadian border back in the uh, the late 19th century. And the two main characters are a U.S. Marshal and a Canadian Mountie, who both uh, cooperated in charge of the law enforcement duties in this town. So I, I think it was that, you know, cross-national uh, cooperation cooperative kind of thing that got me intrigued by it, I guess. Um, and then there was a TV adaptation of The Black Stallion, which was a you know a half-hour adaptation, and they somehow were able to get Mickey Rooney to star in the show, and he actually reprises his role that he had that he played in the original movie adaptation of the novel. So uh, 
and as you can, and obviously as you can see, they all got uh, DVD releases here in the states in somewhat uh, abbreviated form. Uh, not well. Black Stallion has the complete uh, first season, but these two are just uh, selected episode packagings of uh, the show. So, but yeah, I, I still, for some reason, I still have a, as not enough of a soft spot for these shows that I had to have them on DVD. Uh, so yeah, that I think, as far as I can tell, is the subconscious germination of my affection for Canada. You know, it's like, hey, they put out some TV shows that I like. Hey, I, I kind of like these Canadian people. And then a few years later, uh, I actually had a pen pal who lived in Central America. And he and I, he and I would, this was before the internet, you know, we uh, started out exchanging letters back and forth. And it eventually, uh, he started sending audio tapes because uh, talking was easier for him than writing or typing because he didn't have a lot of strength in his hands. And eventually, uh, he got a video camera. Uh, I This was long before I had a video camera. And he started sending me uh, videotapes of him, you know, talking that I could watch instead of just listen to. And uh, he was a fan of a... It was actually a Western, but uh, the hero actually used martial arts instead of six shooters. It was called Kung Fu. It was a popular show back in the 70s, or was it 60s? I can't remember. Uh, starred David Carradine. And, uh, a can and a, again, a Canadian company... Uh, produced a sequel series called Kung Fu The Legend Continues, and he had asked me to start videotaping the episodes for him so that I could send them to him and he could watch them. He had found out about it from a magazine or something, but of course it didn't air down there in Central, Central America. And so uh, just, uh, I never really got into the show, not to nearly to the degree that he did, but of course videotaping the show, I just kind of watched it every now and then, and I kind of enjoyed it. And uh, as I was starting to get into music at that point, I had to pick up the soundtrack, so uh, yeah, Kung Fu, The Legend Continues, and the music is by the Canadian composer Jeff Dana. This is actually, a, it's very cool music, it's great music to, to kind of relax to, honestly. He, uh, my pen pal friend, uh, passed away a number of years ago, so this is kind of, this is really a remembrance of him, this is why I keep this, uh, really reminds me of him and the friendship that we had, so uh, plus, conveniently, it fits into the Canada Week theme of uh, my videos here, so uh, and then also continuing along the uh, TV show discussion, uh, in amongst my sister's CDs, this is you know skipping forward several years uh, with my sister's CDs, she had the soundtrack from a TV show called Due South, which was about a Canadian Mountie who uh, moves to Chicago and becomes a, uh, a partner of sorts reluctantly with a Chicago cop. Uh, it's kind of a, a comedy drama sort of a series. Uh, and yeah, a lot of famous uh, popular Canadian uh, artists on here, Sarah McLaughlin, The Guess Who, uh, Blue Rodeo, I think is relatively popular, uh, Holly Cole, she's a popular uh, uh, singer. And yeah, so a good selection of songs on here. And when I was uh, going through the stuff at Skip's going out of business sale, he happened to have season one of the show, Do South. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Since I had the soundtrack, I figured I might as well pick up the series. And I've watched the pilot episode of it so far. It's kind of fun. Um, I intend to watch more of it. So, uh, But yeah, that's kind of continuing along the uh, TV show discussion. And then fast forward several years as I really started getting into music big time. Uh, I honestly did not pay a whole lot of attention, any particular attention, to Canadian artists at the time. Uh, I didn't shy away from them. Uh, it's just that, you know, they didn't really stick out for me until right around the year 2000, as I will explain later this week, one of my favorite albums of all time came out, and uh, it was pretty much completely unknown south of the 49th parallel. I actually had to order it as a Canadian import because it was not uh, marketed in the States. Uh, but yeah, I will go into that later on, and that's really at the, the point where I really started to pay attention to Canadian music to see, hey, is there any other stuff out there that's uh, not available in the States that I might be missing out on? And that's pretty much uh, where we are. That brings us to where we are today. Um, and I kind of been paying attention to Canadian music ever since, really. And I thought uh, in this episode is just kind of an introductory as I've been going on and on. I thought I'd talk about a little bit about uh, some uh, compilation CDs that I have. Um, here's one that I found, Northern Stars, uh, a Canadian singers and songwriters collection. It's got Nelly Furtado, Tal Backman, Sarah McLaughlin, Brian Adams, Alanis Morissette, Bruce Coburn, Bare Naked Ladies. I mean, it's, you know, an all-star, a who's who of popular Canadian music is on here. And so, I, obviously, I had to pick this up, uh, being a fan of Canadian music. And then uh, one, of, one of the other kind of oddballs, strangely, that seems to be the only Canadian compilation that I have. I looked uh, several times through my compilation CDs, and that's really the only Canadian compilation that I have, but I do have a couple of other 
Odds and Ends, um, a Canadian comedy duo that became popular on SCTV, uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie. This is Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis, I believe. Uh, yeah. This is, you know, they, they pro probably make, uh, they exaggerate the stereotypes that Americans probably uh, think of when they think of Canadians. But honestly, this is some of the funniest stuff uh, Americans or Canadians will ever hear. So Bob and Doug McKenzie is uh, you know, it's kind, of, kind of a jewel. And of course, you have uh, Weird Al's Anthem of Source for Canada, Canadian Idiot, his parody of American Idiot. Uh, it's it's probably a little harsher on Canadians than I would be, but uh, it you know still it's funny as hell. I mean, he obviously does it in total in total fun in in jest toward Canadians, but uh, yeah, I can't help but laugh at that. Uh, out of if nothing else, out of my affection for the Canadian people. And then I also have a handful of books here. Um, a couple of them are not music related. Maybe I'll get those out of the way first, but the other ones are music related. So you want to be a Canadian? Quite frankly, yes, I do. Uh, yeah, there, there's a list of things that I would uh, about America that would make me gladly surrender my citizenship and uh, emigrate to the land up north. Uh, it, this is mostly a tongue-in-cheek uh, guide for uh, you know citizenship and a primer on Canadian history and whatnot for people who uh, might want to actually uh, you know move to Canada and become a citizen. Uh, it's a very funny book, and uh, it, it's kind of its companion volume written by the same uh, pair, Carrie Colburn and Rob Sorensen. And this <laughs> this has got to win the award for one of the best book titles ever, The U.S. of A. <laughs> yes, uh, How Canada Secretly Controls the United States and Why That's Okay. Uh, yes, th this is it's just hilarious. Uh, it, t it talks about all of the ways that uh, Canadian culture has infiltrated the United States. Uh, yeah. I've gotten a lot of fun out of these two books particularly. And then I do have a small handful of music-related Canadian books in my library. I thought I would show them to you. This one um, I think I got on a trip to Powell's up in Portland uh, several years ago. I've had it for several years. It is the top 100 Canadian albums. Uh, I, why would I not buy this, honestly, when I saw it? And I'm not sure how the ranking is done. I don't know, I don't know if it's done strictly by sales or if it's done by some kind of a poll or what. But, uh, you know, it has all of the... Uh, the ones you would expect on this list, the Guess Who, Neil Young, uh, yeah, The Tragically Hip, Daniel Lenoir. So yeah, it's a, a very interesting book, very fun to read. And then I found uh, one that I did not know exist was its companion volume. I found this several years after, the Top 100 Canadian Singles. And uh, it's, it's just as much fun to read. And uh, yeah, you will find you know, The Pursuit of Happiness. Rough Trade, Leonard Cohen, obviously. So yeah, a fun, fun pair of books to uh, browse through, kind of sort of coffee table style books. And then this one I found actually on my last trip to Powell's. Yeah, I think uh, this a uh, couple months ago. Uh, and uh, Ryan, I think you would be uh, pleased at the title of this one. True North, the Canadian Songbook. And as you can see, it's a nice big volume here. Very luxurious um, canvas bound book um, and I got it for twelve ninety five honestly and it's it's interesting it talks about uh, certain songs that were written by Canadian songwriters and uh, it also has uh, beautiful photos it's kind of a combination photo book and book about Canadian music and the kicker on it was I'll show it to you here it has a pair of CDs yes they are uh, renditions of the songs talked about in the book not the original versions, but uh, versions with orchestral, mostly orchestral backing, I think. But uh, yeah, I mean, for twelve ninety five, a nice, big, lavishly illustrated book and two CDs. Again, how could I not buy it, honestly? And you know, one of the things that really shocked and amazed me as I was doing the research for this week's videos is how much uh, Canadian artists have infiltrated American listening over the years. I mean, honestly, it's, it's really surprising. I mean, classic rockers, the Guess Who, are Canadian. Uh, and country pioneer Hank Snow, he's Canadian. They, they have country music in Canada, <laughs> go figure. And uh, um, 60s and 70s crooner Paul Anka, you know, one of the less popular in the grand scheme of things, uh, crooners of his style, but yeah, Canadian all the way. Uh, 60s and 70s hit maker Joni Mitchell is Canadian. And forgive me if I'm saying some of these names as if to say, Classic, you know, great classic artists can't be Canadian. Of course, that's a stupid thing to say. It's just, you know, 
it, it's just, it surprises and amazes me, amazes me, as I said, how much of my library is Canadian without having previously known it until, you know, until I put it all together. Isn't Wikipedia amazing? Uh, and of course, anyway, the uh, more class, the more popular uh, uh, current artists, Michael Bublé. Of course, we we pretty much all know that he's Canadian, uh, one, of, one of the more proudly Canadian, I think, artists. And then, of course, one of the most recent uh, superstars who hails from Canada, Sean Mendez. There's, I mean, you know, producers like uh, Daniel Lenoir and uh, David Foster and Bob Rock, who have produced countless uh, American artists, are all, you know, Canadian citizens as well as uh, film composers like Jeff Dana that I showed you a minute ago and his brother Michael, as well as Howard Shore, film composer. He's he's Canadian. Then, of course, there are the artists that uh, you pretty much uh, can't get more Canadian than to have Canadian in your name, like the Canadian Brass, a great classical ensemble there, and another uh, classical pop crossover, popra, maybe, if you will. Uh, not one of my favorite genres, but uh, this was actually in my sister's CDs, uh, so I kind of had to hang on to it, uh, and, and they're kind of cool. Uh, the Canadian Tenors, so, which uh, they actually shortened their name in on their second or maybe third album to just The Tenors, which, I mean, I say, you know, why drop the Canadian from your name, guys? Be proud. You're here, you're Canadian, get used to it, right? Uh, and then uh, also a couple other ones that uh, were in my sister's collection that uh, I actually hadn't heard of until I saw their CDs, and then... As I said on Wikipedia, I found out that they're, they're Canadian as well. Amanda Marshall, a pop and R&B singer. Uh, this is her first album, and I, I like this one enough that I'm going to look for her subsequent albums as well. And then a jazz uh, artist, Jesse Cook. Jazz guitarist, excuse me. Jesse Cook, whose uh, his album The Rumba Foundation was in my sister's collection. And of course, she's introduced me to Sarah McLaughlin. She had three or four of, his, of her CDs in my collection, and... I like her enough that uh, I've bought more of hers. I always thought she was much more of a Celine Dionish, uh, you know, uh, diva, easy listening kind of thing. I didn't realize that Sarah McLaughlin was more, more of a pop rock uh, artist, and so that she kind of she kind of appealed to me in that respect. Uh, kind of surprising. And then of course we have uh, we can't overlook the artists that are half Canadian, half Canadian, half American in this case. Uh, Rufus Wainwright, one of my favorites. Uh, his uh, mother was Kate McGarrigle, I believe. There were uh, two sisters, Kate and Anna McGarrigle. I think Kate was Rufus's mother, and Anna was uh, his aunt. Uh, and he's also the son of American artist uh, Loudon Wainwright III. And then uh, George Nazuka, who is a R&B hip-hop uh, artist, who is uh, obviously uh, half Canadian, half American, as I said. He is the ne uh, nephew of American actress Kira Sedgwick. A little trivia note that's neither here nor there. Uh, so yeah, he's um, he's also got a brother, uh, Justin Nozuka, who I've heard before. Uh, didn't really strike me, but I, I kind of like uh, George's uh, debut album, I believe. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, uh, American classic hard rocker Steppenwolf. They are half American, half Canadian. So, so yes, as you can see, there is no shortage of Canadian talent that is worthy of anyone's music library, honestly. Um, and I will be showing you through the course of this week's videos some of the, mostly some of the lesser known ones that happen to be personal favorites of mine. I have, truth be told, confession time, uh, much as the case with American artists, it's taking me a painfully long amount of time to really start delving into artists of Canadian descent that uh, were popular from before my time. Like, the most egregious uh, example of this is Neil Young. Yes, I have not really listened to anything of Neely. I mean, just you know, a few of his hit singles that I've heard incidentally, but beyond that, I really haven't taken the time to check out Neil Young, and all the more reason, too, he is Skip's favorite artist of all time, so that should be even more of a reason. That's a New Year's resolution of mine, is to start checking out more of Neil Young, and uh, one of the long-term goals, as I've mentioned before, with this channel is to try delving more into music from before my time. And so that's one thing I'm going to make a concerted effort to do, especially in this new year, is to explore the Canadian artists of that genre. I haven't been avoiding classic Canadian uh, music uh, in the past year, or two years actually, I guess. Uh, you know, just It just happens that I haven't really been delving into them. So yeah, Neil Young is pretty much at the top of my list. I've started checking out Leonard Cohen because I, I have a sneaking suspicion that I'm really going to like Leonard Cohen and I've listened to most of his first album, Songs of Leonard Cohen, and I, and I kind of like it. Um, I definitely intend to. Uh, he's 
he's number two. Well, maybe number one on my list. Neil Young is a very close second. I'm going to start checking out. I have not really checked out at all Bruce Coburn or Gordon Lightfoot. Um, I'm not sure if I would like them. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big fan of folk, and I, as I understand, they're both kind of more on the folky side. I know Leonard Cohen is, but anyway, I'm rambling on here. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this introductory segment to Canada Week here on Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, there are much more Canadian-related music shenanigans to come this week, so please stick around. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.